Shalom Israel. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Wadash, that by honest to the apostles, elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. And, um, you know, just want to do a quick uh, lesson on, uh, you know, this morning, Esau, you know, this uh, devil Donald Trump, how he's going to bring America down. All right, and this this uh, is a is a um, article I found on Prison Planet. It reads, uh, "Come to your senses, Russia slams Trump's space-based missile defense plans." It reads on to say, after what many are describing as Trump's attempt challenging channeling of Reagan's Star Wars program with the Thursday unveiling of a missile defense strategy, heavily focused on space as the next war fighting the domain. Moscow has issued a predictability harsh rebuke, calling the new published U.S. Missile Defense Review openly confrontational and a danger to global stability and peace. You know, hey man, so this hey this is helping us measure in the times. All right, this is helping us measure in the times, man, because not only is Trump, um, you know, he backed out of the IMF. Uh, treaty you know but at the same time he has you know a lot of his nuclear missile bases around the borders of Russia like in Ukraine for example okay so it says warning that Washington's missile defense strategy could restart the Cold War era arms race all right what's the Cold War era that was basically all talk all right but the time we coming into is it's about to be uh a less talk and more doing you know, that's why these other nations like China, um, North Korea, um, Russia are strutting, you know, uh, uh, their power as far as doing multiple, uh, you know, um, missile, uh, you know, nuclear uh, missile uh, practices, man. You know, Russia even has missiles. All right. As far as, you know, really land and sea missiles that can go undetected by uh, defense uh, missile defense systems. OK, so it says warnings that Washington's missile defense strategy could restart the Cold War era armed race. The Russian foreign ministry on Friday accused the White House of seeking to weaponize space while removing any limitations to development. Indeed, President Trump did appear to reaffirm his con controversial decision to pull off the 1987 intermediate range nuclear forces treaty with Russia during his remark at the Pentagon Thursday affirming we are committed to establishing a missile defense program that can shield every city in the United States and we will never negotiate away our right to do this okay and really this is just uh you know you reading it through the spirit this is really just a sign of the times man all right because other nations, you know what I'm saying? Like Russia, hey, Russia, you know, they wasn't it's lock here. Let me um let me read it again. All right, because I want to get my words together. So it says we are committed to establishing a missile defense program that can shield every city in the United States, and we will never forget, never negotiate away our right to do this. You know, so Russia is looking at that as a as a threat. Like you think we will harm you? Okay, shit, now we will. You know, that's why the scripture say in Ezekiel 38 and 10 that he shall think an evil thought and, to, and should go down to um, basically Babylon. All right, him and his companions, man, all these other nations, man. Now you have, uh, you had uh, news is coming out to where Turkey, all right, and um, Iran, all these other nations are forming, you know, coming together with Russia, man. That's the scriptures, you know, how the scriptures say, let the weak say I am strong. So it says, in response, the Russian foreign ministry announced, we would like to note that the very same logic served as the foundation of the widespread nuclear missile race that brought the world to the brink of disaster multiple times. The statement added that U.S. defense planners apparently to stop, decided to step on the same rake with predictable consequences in references to to 20th century nuclear brinkmanship. All right. And we at that time, man. All right. Let me get this preset real quick. 
All right, because the scriptures tell you, man. Um, I think it's in Revelation 11. Maybe it's nine. Nine and twelve. It says, One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Alright. Actually, I want to get um, let me see. You know, and those woes, while well, fun is, those are actually talking about the uh the world wars. All right, it wasn't 11, uh, 14. So it says the second war was passed. All right, so Re Revelation 9, all right, because of the eight of prophets, the, the uh, apostle John, he's seen all the wars, all the major wars, you know, that was going to happen upon the earth, man. He's seen all the wars. All right, so in Revelation 9, it talks about one war. It says in two, all right, which a war means death. All right, and when you look into the history, all right, amongst all the wars that happened, the ones that had the major deaths is what World War One and World War Two. So it says the second woe was past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Okay, and even um even Jeremiah he seen it man. When you on the book of Jeremiah he said all the uh the, the let me just grab it actually instead of quoting it. This is um I think it's six and nine. Let's see. Maybe it's 9 and 6. Uh, was it Jeremiah? Maybe it's Isaiah. It's Lockheed. Yeah, it's Lockheed. Oh, 9 and 5. Okay. All right. Because even Isaiah seen this. And it says, For uh, for every battle of the warriors with confused noise and garments rolled within blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Because this third world's war is going to be of a nuclear war, man. You know? With a nuclear war, when you um, go into it, it's actually measured to the um the tons of TNT it carries. So, like, for example, like an um, atomic bomb, which a nuke, I believe, is known as actually a hydrogen bomb, which is way more powerful than an atomic bomb. So, like, an atomic bomb would carry... Let's say 100 tons of TNT, but a nuke will carry 300 tons of TNT. All right. And once it hits down, all right, it's going to, hey, it's going to burn. That's what the scriptures say. The Lord is going to sweep Babylon with the besom of destruction, you know. And that's what all the prophets of old spoke about, man. Jeremiah 28 and 8 tells us that, man. The prophets of old have been before me and before thee. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old. Prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Okay. So this a hey, this is where we come in at, man. Alright, we tell you, you know, uh Babylon is going down, man. And we prophesy, which the word prophesy means to say before it happens. Okay, and that's how you know a prophet is among you when these things shall happen. Alright, now reading back into the article, it says Trump and the NDR. Itself called for investments into new technologies focused on space, such as space-based space-based launch detection sensors that will coordinate anti-air missiles on the ground in the place like Alaska, in order to shield every American city. All right, and a you know you see why it's got to be Alaska because Alaska is you know right right um basically right under Russia. Okay, so this is in order to shield every American city. The president said the U.S. must recognize that space is a new war, war fighting domain with the Space Force leading the way. His further promise, it will be a very, very big part of America's future defense. My upcoming budget will invest in a space based missile defense layer. It's new technology. It's untimely going to be a very, very big part of our defense. And obviously of our offense, you know, and for, you know, just to um, add as I was reading it, you know, the people, you know, you Americans should be uh, ashamed at your president, man, at your leader. Here it is. 
he can't open up the government because he don't have the money to uh, fund a wall. But you damn sure got enough money to go to war. You know, you don't got enough money to uh, help your people, but you damn sure got enough money, all right, to uh, build this so-called space program. You know, and that's Esau's and Maul's, the scriptures say, man. Esau, Edom uh, were ruled by the sword, man. You know, and this is this is how he's comfortable, man. You know, when you go into the history, he's it's been basically as, as long as Esau's been in power, he's been uh, uh, warring, you know, for the most part. So it says, uh, but Moscow fired back that the plan practically gives the green light to deploy elements with strike capability in space, which will inevitably lead to an arms race in space, which will have the worst kind of consequences for international security and stability. All right. This uh, uh, the statement further urged Washington to come to his senses and abandon any restart of a new Star Wars program. First proposed under the Reagan administration, it described that the opposite of global stability and peace would be the outcome. Let me read that again. It described, let me read, no, I'm going to start from the top. The statement further urged Washington to come to its senses and abandon any restart of a new Star Wars program. First proposed under the Reagan administration, it described that the opposite of global stability and peace would be the outcome. As any weaponization of space will result in a heavy blow to international stability, which is already falling apart thanks to irresponsible, irresponsible actions by Washington, the statement concluded, obviously no one wins in this scenario. All right. And no one will win, man. The only one who's going to win is the Israelites. All right. That's the only one that's supposed to win. It says, uh, Moscow partly appears to be reacting to the fact that the Pentagon's review of the nation's missile defense, the first since 2010, specifically names Russia as among bad actors and potential threats. For example, the, conclude, the concluding section to the newly published missile defense review. All right, that, that was it. I ain't going to read no more. You know, but hey, man, I got bad news for Esau, man. The most hard gonna stop you in your tracks, man. All right, the scriptures tell us right here in Job 14 and 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Okay, because Esau's days are determined, man. All right. When you read the scriptures, Esau, you know, America was actually prophesied in the scriptures as Babylon the Great. You know, it even goes, America is actually a part of uh, um, the visual, the vision of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, man. You know, you have part uh, iron, part um, uh, gold. Then when you go into the, um, you know, the feet, it was part, it, it, um, you know, part um, iron, part miry clay, man. You know, and then what took out that, what took out that whole statue, man? Is uh that stone? All right. So when uh, Esau thinks to go out of space, Mosai is gonna take him down, man. All right. You gotta, hey, you gotta. It's lucky. You got, you gonna, hey, the Mosai is gonna make Esau stand upon his feet. The scriptures say, you have to deal with the threats that's here on earth. You know, like I said, you can't even, you can't even rule a, you know, the little space that the Mosai gave you in America. How the hell you think the Mosai gonna allow you to go into space? All right. So it says, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Now I had looked up that word bound. OK, and it means a prescribed portion. A prescribed task. OK, so Esau got his portion, man, which is America. All right. That's your portion, man. Stick with that, you know. Hey, Esau, like the brother, the brother Kalab in the camp, he always says, man, Esau's a bad tenant. You know, here it is. You sign a lease. You know what I'm saying? You sign a lease and the landlord gets, just gives you the first floor. It comes with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchen, you know what I'm saying? Living room. And that's what, you know, that's what your lease entails. You know, but while the landlord goes away, you decide you want to rent out the basement for yourself. You know, you want to have cookouts in the backyard. 
you know, and, uh, you know, expect the landlord not to say anything. But when the landlord comes back, he finds that you've been violating the lease. Now there's penalties for it, man. You know, now there's penalties for it, man. And he's all about to uh, uh, pay for that penalty, you know. You know, the scriptures uh, speak about how, how how his sins has reached up into heaven, man. You know, not only did you take the uh, the Lord's chosen people into captivity, all right, and ruled over them with the rod of iron, which you still have them in captivity, and you plan to, you know, keep them in captivity. Really, you plan to put them in deeper captivity, all right, by putting a chip in them, all right? Hey, you, you are uh, trying to overstep your boundaries, man, you know? And then you, hey, you setting yourself up as the Most High. You setting yourself, you setting yourself up as the landlord now, man. You know. So hey, you, <laughs> hey, the Most High gonna, hey, he gonna um show you who the real landlord is, man. All right, so this is your penalty, man. This is Habakkuk chapter two, verse five. It says, "Yeah, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man." Need to keep it at home. You need to, you know, you need to keep it at uh, your boundaries, man. You know, but you want to go into others, other boundaries and tell them how to do it, man. You know, that's this. Hey, this is not your house, man. You know. So it says, who enlargeth his desire as hell. And this is death. All right. Here it is. You fucking up your own apartment. You know what I'm saying? You got holes in the wall and shit like that. All right. Now you want to uh, uh, go into the basement. You know what I'm saying? Put your shit in the backyard. You know what I'm saying? Use the garage. You know, he is a problem, man. Need to keep it at home. Who enlargeth his desire as hell and is death and cannot be satisfied. So you can't be satisfied, you know what I'm saying, with that beautiful apartment you got, man. You know, uh, metaphorically speaking, man, which is America. But gather unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. You know, now you're trying to tell other people, uh, uh you know what I'm saying, how, you know, now you're trying to tell, um, now you're trying to tell the people on the second floor how to, how to, uh, you know what I'm saying? How to arrange their furniture, so to speak, you know? Like, you the landlord. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, woe well, to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long, and to him that leadeth himself with thick clay? Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? In a week that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them. Hey, and along with Russia, these other nations feel that way too. You know? But like I said, it was at one point to where they couldn't do anything about it because they didn't have the firepower. You know? But Ezekiel 38, it says that Russia or Gog and Magog shall be a guard unto them. You know? Which Russia, man, once, hey, once that bear comes out of hibernation, you know, hey, you're going to wish she stay asleep. You know? Hey, you know, so hey, you got, hey, you gonna, <laughs> you gonna have Russia to deal with, you know, you gonna have these other nations to deal with, and ultimately you gonna have Yahweh Shah to deal with, man, you know, so yeah, you gonna have to focus on that before you, uh, you know what I'm saying, go out of space, you know, hey, so with that, uh, Shalom to the elect.